Hello, it's me, David, with Baking Unafraid. <laughs> Hi guys, I'm back, back in action. It is 2020. We have things that we need to do, we need to learn, and I figured for today's special day, we'll make snickerdoodles because it's cinnamon day. Snickerdoodles. The snickerdoodle is really the perfect cookie. It is sweet, it's, it has a cinnamon spice. It is perfect for fall. I just love a snickerdoodle and I'm gonna teach you all how to bake one. It's super easy, anyone can do them and I'm gonna give you the little tips and tricks of the trade from this at-home baker. So first thing we need to do is you're gonna gather all your ingredients. Um, so we need flour, sugar, butter, eggs, cream of tartar, salt, baking soda, vanilla, and cinnamon sugar. Duh, snickerdoodles. So we are going to put all of the dry ingredients together. This should always be your first step when there's dry and wet ingredients. And with the dry ingredients, you just wanna take a whisk and just mix it all together so it's one unit. Um, the wicks, the wick, wick, excuse me. <clears throat> The whisk will mix all the ingredients together. It's gonna get out those clumps. And then once that's all mixed and whisked together, say that three times fast, you can't. Bet you can't. Um, whisk, 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 whisk. Mix and whisk, mix, whisk. <laughs> mix and whisk, whisk. Mix and whisk. Never mind. Set those dry ingredients aside. And now we're going to put together the wet ingredients. So for this, the wet ingredients, you're going to need room temperature butter. I cannot stress the importance of this. If you do not have room temperature butter, this will not work. It just won't work. The reason you need room temperature butter is that is what's gonna help emulsify the sugar and butter together, get a nice cream going, a nice base for your dough. And with cold butter, it just won't mix. You're gonna be fighting the blender, or the mixer and it's just gonna cause you stress and your arm stress, just, just don't do it. One of my little tricks actually is if you take a stick of butter from the refrigerator, you can put it in the microwave, flip it on its side every five seconds and it's perfectly room temperature after that. So if you don't have time, it's a great little trick. So you're gonna put the butter and the sugar in the blender and then on medium speed, you're gonna blend it for four minutes. No more, no less, four minutes. Set a timer. Walk away and blend, medium speed. After those four minutes, your butter and sugar should be a nice pale white creamy color. That is what we are going for. So when that has happened, go ahead and you can scrape down the sides of the bowls, make sure it's all put together. And then we're gonna add our eggs. Go ahead and add your egg one at a time on low speed. Make sure it's completely mixed in um, before you add the second egg. And then once you have the eggs mixed in, we're gonna mix in the vanilla. Do the same thing with the vanilla. Make sure it's all nice and mixed in. Don't mix it too much, just until it's mixed in. You got this, I promise. So now you have your wet ingredients all mixed together, right? So now we're gonna take your dry ingredients that you set aside, bring them back bring them back bring them back so this is my other little trick that i have instead of just pouring this big bowl of dry ingredients into your mixer get like a little half cup scoop or a spoon or something and just start spooning the mixture in you can put that mixer on low speed so the flour and dry mixture doesn't just you know shoot everywhere so put it on low and you're going to put scoop and scoop and scoop at a time and then once you've mixed in your dry ingredients, you're going to mix this until it's just combined. If you were to keep mixing those dry ingredients with the wet ingredients, you're gonna have gluten that starts forming and it's gonna be a really, really tough cookie. And no one wants a tough cookie, right? Am I right? Stop the mix, just stop. Stop your mixing, stop it, stop. So once your dough is completely mixed together, go ahead and Take some plastic wrap or press and seal. We're gonna go ahead and put that on the dough and then put that in the refrigerator for 20 to 30 minutes, just so that butter has time to rest and kind of harden up again, so it's easier to make the cookie dough or the cook balls, cookie, cookie dough balls. I knew I'd get there. 
Actually, and just for this occasion, I'm gonna show you how to roll some cookie dough balls in a memento. Oh, wow, I conveniently have a tray ready. Let's do this. All right, so what you wanna do, if you have one of these nifty little cookie dough ball scoops, see right here, that is the perfect cookie size. Now you don't have to get this, you don't have to have one of these, but seriously, you can go to the store, get one for like five bucks or something. They're not that bad. Um, you could spend a little more. This one was 10 bucks from Kroger. Um, it just makes life so much easier. But you, so you take this like this and then Um, camera editor, can you? It's a little cold. <laughs> and then it's gonna come out perfectly in a ball like so. You can just roll it. Simple little ball. And then we're just gonna take our cinnamon sugar and we're just gonna uh, mix it up and get that all nice and coated in cinnamon sugar. Like so, like that. And then we are gonna put it on our tray and we're gonna just squish it down. So you don't have to do this step, but I like my cookies to be nice and flat and chewy. So if you take your thumb, you just squish it down like that and it'll make sure that the center doesn't rise. Um, if you like a big fluffy cookie, you just wouldn't, you would just skip the pressing the down phase, pressing the down phase, quote, pressing the down. Skip that phase. So now we're just gonna go through the rest of the dough and just keep making bo uh, keep making uh, balls. Um, spears, cookie dough spears. Maybe is that a better cookie cookie spears? And we are going to do this until the movie magic says that we have a full tray of cookies. So now we've made all of our cookies. We're gonna take those cookies and go ahead and put them in the oven at 350 degrees Fahrenheit. And you're gonna bake them for nine to 11 minutes. You could probably do a little more than 11 minutes if you like a firmer, crunchier cookie, um, but it's really up to preference. To tell if your cookies are done, you would want to look at the sides of the cookies and see if there is browning. This is a little difficult with the snickerdoodle since there is cinnamon sugar on the cookie, um, which is already a little brown. So you just have to look very carefully. Um, the other thing is try not to check your cookies before nine minutes. Make sure you at least give the whole nine minutes um, just so it's a solid bake. If you're opening and checking the oven multiple times, you're actually letting heat out of the oven, which is then gonna make an inconsistent bake, and then your cookies might take maybe 12, 13, 14, even 15 minutes if you constantly open and close the oven. Anywho, and now we have our finished snickerdoodles. So these I just made earlier today. Um, when you take them out of the oven, you just let them cool on the tray for about five minutes and then you can move them to the cookie rack. They're gonna actually continue to cook on the tray for those five minutes. So that's why you don't want to bake them too long um, because that tray is still hot and those are still baking. Once those cookies have cooled on the tray for about five minutes, take them, put them on a cooling rack if you have one. Um, if not, you can just Take one like this and just put it straight into your mouth. Ooh, look at that cookie. It's so soft. Let's see. Literally, so good. Like, this reminds me of my childhood. Just fresh, homey, the fall. I wish it could be cinnamon day every day. Cause like, I could literally eat these every day. All right, well, I'm gonna go finish my cookies. I wish you could have some, but don't forget to bake unafraid and be you.